everyone, welcome back to my channel. During the last video, we outlined the key steps in conducting EFA. The second step, determine the number of factors to be retained in the analysis will be the focus of this video. As mentioned in the previous video, the purpose of factor analysis is to reduce the large number of variables to a set of factors that can be used for data collection and analysis. Thus, determination of the number of factors is critically important. It is performed before the factor rotation stage, so it can subsequently impact the results of the factor analysis. For instance, the rotated factor patterns factor score estimates, and the interpretation of the factors. The minimum number of factors can be extracted is one, meaning that if you have three items measuring the same thing, then these three items are belong to the same factor. So the number of factors extracted is one. Nevertheless, the largest number of factors that can be extracted is same to the total number of the variables in this case, if you have three items measuring three different aspects, then the result of EFA will show that there are three different underlying factors. There are several methods have been developed to determine the optimal number of factors to retain. This video will introduce five strategies, which are theory-driven approach, Kaiser criterion, screen plot, parallel analysis, and minimum average partial criteria, which also known as MAP analysis. Among these approaches, SPSS software supports the use of Kaiser criterion and spree plot. However, the software cannot perform the later two approaches, parallel analysis and MAP analysis. So we have to perform it by using syntax, and we will discuss about it later. Use of theory-driven approach in determining number of factors actually rely on the theoretical or conceptual framework of your research. When you design an instrument to measure particular constructs, if the theoretical framework is sound, you are expecting to see the structure or pattern in the data. Moreover, you can compare the final structure with your initial theoretical framework and examine whether they are compatible. The second method, Kaiser criterion, proposed by Kaiser in 1960, is perhaps the best known and most utilized in practice. According to the rule, only the factors that have eigenvalues greater than one are retained for interpretation. Similar to the tutorial in the last video, we need to go to the toolbar and select Analyze, and look for Dimension Reduction, and Select Factor. Select all the items, by clicking Control A and insert into the variables column. Next, go to descriptives and select initial solution, coefficients, significant levels, determinants, and KMO and Bartley test of sphericity. Click continue. For extraction, because this data set is deviated from the normal distribution, so we have to select principal axis factoring. And here, select screen plot for display and click continue. For the other three, we will leave it alone and click OK for the results. For Kaiser criteria, we have to go to the output, look for total variance explain table. Examining the initial eigenvalues, we can see that we have seven factors with eigenvalue greater than one. So means if we follow the Kaiser criterion, we have to retain seven factors for our later analysis. However, this is not consistent with what we have proposed in the conceptual framework. Many past literatures had argued that use of Kaiser criterion alone to determine number of factors to be extracted as least accurate. Let's move on to the next approach, Cattell's screen test, which is also a popular method in deciding number of extracted factors. It involves the visual exploration of a graphical representation of eigenvalues. We need to identify the natural band or elbow in the data where the slope of the curve flattens. By inspecting the screen plot in our data, you can see the first inflection point is located at the fifth point. 
Hence, we can conclude that there are four factors can be extracted based on the items of the instrument. But some script plots do not have one clear band. Back to our example, we also can argue that we observe a second band at 0.9 that will resulting in eight factors for factor analysis. Therefore, this method has been criticized for its subjectivity since there is not an objective definition of the cutoff point. Past research has suggested a combination of Kaiser criterion and examination of script plot to be utilized in deciding the number of factors to extract in EFA. If you do not want to conduct a more complicated analysis to determine the number of factors, then you can start with this step. But if you're looking for a more accurate and precise method, you could continue watching this video to learn more about it. We will introduce another two more methods, which are parallel analysis and MAP analysis. Parallel analysis is proposed by Horn in 1965. It is a method based on the generation of random eigenvalue to determine the number of factors to retain. Although it is more accurate, but it is not included in SPSS software, and thus it is not widely used. Using this process, only factors with eigenvalues that are significant above the mean are preferable the 95 percentile of those random eigenvalues should be retained. The first step to perform parallel analysis is to download the syntax. You can go to Google and search for all corner parallel analysis. Click on the website and scroll down and you will see the syntax file for different statistical packages. We are using SPSS in this demonstration, so we will select parallel analysis. Click on the link and you will see the syntax. Click Ctrl A to select all the text and go back to SPSS. In SPSS, select File, New, Syntax. You will see a blank workbook. Paste the syntax we copy here. Although the syntax looks very complicated, but the execution of the process is actually quite easy. We only have to look at line eight and nine and make changes here. For compute n cases, change the number according to the sample size. For our data set, we have 167 respondents, so change the number into 167. For line nine compute n VARS, uh, which is the number of variables, change the number according to how many items you have in the instrument. So for our instrument, we have 32 items, so change accordingly. Then the next step is to select all by clicking Control A and click the green button here to run the analysis. The output will be displayed on SPSS Statistics Viewer, and you will see the matrix here. Based on the result, you will see there are three columns. We will compare the values in the third column, which is the 95th percentile of random eigenvalues with the eigenvalues in the total variance explained table. What we are going to do is copy both tables and put it side by side for comparison. So we copy the uh, matrix of parallel analysis and the total variance explained table and put it side by side to make the comparison. As you can see, we have four sets of initial eigenvalues, which are greater than the random eigenvalues generated. For example, the first one, the eigenvalues is 11.648, which is greater than 2.005, the eigenvalue generated. So means we can retain factor one. For the second factor, the value, the eigenvalue is 4.474. And the eigenvalue generated in parallel analysis is 1.83. So we still can retain factor two. The comparison is here. 
we can make the comparison until we see the value in the parallel analysis is greater than the value in the total variance explained table. For example, um, which is the fifth value here, the fifth pair of value here, the, the value in the parallel analysis matrix table is 1.539, and the value in the total variance explained table is 1.214. So at this point, the value of the total variance explained table, the initial eigenvalues is lesser than what we have in the parallel analysis. So for this factor, the fifth factor we cannot retain. So as a conclusion, we will retain four factors in our later factor analysis. The last method is Valis's MAP test, which is another more modern methodology for determining the number of factors to extract in the context of PCA. Similar to the steps in performing parallel analysis, we will also visit the O'Connor website and copy the syntax from there. For MAP test, we will click on MAP.SPS and you'll see all the syntax. Control A to select all the syntax and copy the syntax and repeat the steps just now. Click File, New, Syntax and paste the syntax here. Once you paste the syntax on SPSS editor, you will see there are four methods you can use to run the analysis. We will utilize the second method, which we straight away go to line 61 and remove the star in front of the syntax. And you will see it will become black and colored. So what we have to do is we change the variable names according to our um, our instrument. So in this demonstration, the first item is Q1. So we change question one to Q1. And the last items in this questionnaire is Q32. So we change question 12 to Q32. Control A to select all the text and click on the green button to run the program. After that, let's refer to our output. Scroll down to the last two lines and you can see the number of components to be extracted in EFA. So you can see the number of components according to a revised uh, 2000 MAP test is four. So the result is similar to what we have done for parallel analysis. Now you should have some ideas on how to determine the number of factors to be extracted in EFA. Let's summarize what we have learned today. We introduced five methods to decide the number of factors to be extracted in EFA. Kaiser criterion is recommended to use with screen plot when determining the number of factors. But else when you are extracting factors by using PCA, you can opt for more accurate and modern strategies to determine the number of factors, which are parallel analysis and MAP test by using syntax. That's all for our video today. Hope to see you all again in the next video.